Hello and welcome to this lesson. Today we're going to be talking about smart chips in Google Sheets. And smart chips are part of this smart canvas idea from Google. And the idea being that you can work more seamlessly between your different files in Google Sheets, between different data sets you have, and it reduces the amount of context switching you have to do. So you can do more work from within the application you're currently using. And in Sheets, the way it manifests itself is that we can get additional information from external sources from outside of Sheets, but inside of our Sheets beyond what we can contain in a cell. So for example, you can see here these smart file chips on my screen right now, and you can see that I can get information about what's going on, what this file is all about, and I can go and extract some data from it if I wish. And we're gonna look at all of that in this video. Let's begin looking at some workflows so you can see what you can do with these smart chips and why they're beneficial. And then we'll look at how we can actually add them to our files and what sort of work we can do with them. So suppose a colleague has sent you a list of client email addresses and they want you to go and pull out some additional information like names and titles before you reach out to these people or before you have a meeting with them. So you would copy the emails into your sheet, convert them to people chips, which is a type of smart chip, and then you can use the data extract techniques to extract some of that extra information. So things like name, phone, title, location, you can pull that information out about that person. And this information comes from that person's domain profile. Now, this isn't, this isn't available on all Google accounts. It's just available on certain workspace and education tiers. And the full details of that are in the blog post, which I link below this video. But you can see how quick this is and how helpful it is compared to going through each record manually one by one and trying to pull out this information by hand. So let's see another example now. And this might be a stock tracker. And again, if you have some financial entity, you can convert it to a finance smart chip. And then when you hover over it, you get additional information about that financial entity. So things like the stock price, whether it's gone up or down, the market cap. And then the final workflow, let's just look at the place smart chip where we can convert addresses or names of places into place chips. And then when we have place chips, we can hover over them to get information about that place. We can see it in a map, we can look at previews, we can even get directions all from our spreadsheets. Great, so now we've seen how these chips work and some example workflows. Let's find out how we can actually work with them, what we can do with them. Okay, so let's take a look at the different types of smart chip. First of all, we have the people smart chip. And this gives you information about a particular person and some action things you can do like email them or start a meet with them or propose a calendar time with them. So that's the, the people chip. Then we have file chips. And again, it tells you a bit about the file, some metadata about that file, and you can go and extract data from a file as well, which we'll look at in just a moment. So you can do sheets, docs, and presentations, but you can't do forms or sites or any of the other apps. It's just those three main ones. Then we have a event, a calendar smart chip. And again, you can convert the URL of a calendar into a smart chip inside of Google Sheets. And that way it tells you a bit about it and you can do things. So that's event ones. We've seen, we've got place chips, Again, it gives you a preview of the map, which you can open in your sidebar then, and you can do things like get directions to that place as well. We have the finance chip, which just gives you some additional information about a financial entity. Then we have something called a rating chip, where I can add these stars to give something a rating. And you can see that all it is an integer between zero and five, that just gets represented visually as a star rating. I can have a YouTube chip where I share a YouTube video 
as a chip. Again, it gives me a little bit of information, tells me the title, it gives me a description. I can have drop down chips where I can specify a data validation rule and then convert them and show them as chips. I can have emoji chips, and I'll show you how we do that from the emoji menu, and date chips, and we'll look at how we do that from the date menu. So very quickly, to create a smart chip, there are a few different ways. So we could convert, we can create these six via the insert menu, insert smart chips. We can also right click, come down here to smart chips, and again, we have those same six. And then the other way is the app menu. We just type the word at, and then we can type in, for example, a file name, and we can access files. We can do locations, and we can access locations. We can type in dates. We can type emoji to get the full emoji options available. That's how we basically input these. We've got the three methods, the insert menu, the right click menu, or typing at, and then typing out the action you want to do. The drop downs are a little bit different because they are actually data validation rules. So really, they're not smart chips, but they are included here simply because they have this chip format, this chip notation, and they are input in a slightly different way through the drop down menu here they have their own dedicated place you can insert them so i have a separate article on drop downs which i'll leave you to explore there now let's see some of the interesting things that we can do with smart chips so let's hover over one and let's do data extractions i'll come and click on data extractions I'm going to extract from b2 let's say i want to get the file name the mime type the creation time and the owner and we're going to extract to C2, which is the cell here. So we'll click Extract, and we'll click Yes, and close this down. And there we go. Look, it's extracted that metadata for me about the sheets. It's called Smart Sheets. It's a spreadsheet. There's the creation time, and the owner is me, is Ben. And you can see the notation that we do is this special type of formula syntax for working with smart sheets where we do the cell dot and then some particular type of data extraction we want to do. And when it's a data extract with a space in it, so file space name, we have to put the double brackets around it. When it's a just a single one like owner here, it doesn't need the brackets around it. It just can go direct to that. So we can just do that ourselves without, we don't have to do that data extract. We can do dot here. We can just do it ourselves and simply type it in, click OK, and it will extract that data for us. So we don't have to use the data extract tool there. We can just write those formulas ourselves. Now, the really interesting thing is that we can chain these formulas as well. So let me delete all this and let's say we want to do equals that dot owner dot email we'll go for. Click enter and there it goes, it pulls up my email. So what I've done is two steps there. I really did this one first was that dot owner. And then we did that dot email because it's a smart chip but we can just do it in one go by chaining the two data extract syntaxes. So that's super cool. We can also work on array. So if I say equals, I'll do the three here, the three file types, the three file smart chips dots mime type. It will just output them there. So it accepts array inputs and gives you array outputs. So that's really handy. You don't need to do a separate formula for each line. It's just got a built-in option to do arrays and you don't have to wrap it with the array formula or any of that sort of nonsense. So what types of data extraction are available? Well, it's easy to see by just simply doing a smart chip 
and then doing dot and you can see the types of data extracts available for this particular one. So this one, we have name, email, phone, title, location. For the files, we have a few more, like when it was last modified and, and things. For the event chips, we have quite a lot about who's attending, who's the organizer, etc. Then that's about it really. For the other ones here, we only can extract the URL. For the finance chip, I don't think there's any. So there's nothing there. For the rating, there's nothing. For the YouTube one, we can extract the URL as well from a smart chip. And then there's nothing for these other ones here. So really it's the people, file, and event chips where you can actually extract some more metadata. Now we can also nest the data extracts inside of other formulas. So let me show you an example of that. So I'll open up sheet two here. I have a few more extra place chips. So we'll say that dot mime type gives me that, gives me the type that it is. Maybe we'll just say unique. And there we go. Okay, so let's just continue. We'll wrap this substitute. I'm going to search for that. We're going to search for this inside of our results and just replace it with a blank string. We'll make sure it's an array formula this time. And there we go. It just converts them now into the spreadsheet document and presentation for us there. So we can drop these data extract formula syntaxes into just regular formulas. So that's really nice. Okay, one more thing I'll show you. One last thing is that we can have multiple smart chips in a single cell. So suppose we start with this one. I'll do it down here, just slightly up the way. We'll double click. I'm going to say comma and type smart doc. There we go. And there we go. You can have multiple ones. And you don't have to put the comma. They can just coexist side by side without the comma there. But you can see I can hover over each of them separately to get the metadata about those particular ones. And one more thing to mention with this, when you have multiple smart chips in a single cell, you can't perform the data extraction operations on them because there's two of them in one cell. So it doesn't give you the option there for data extract. And if I try and do, say, dot owner, it just gives me an error message that there's nothing there. So if you want to do the data extracts, like we saw, then they need to each be in separate individual cells. And then you'll get the option to do that data extract there, either with the tool or with the formulas. Great, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video and that you now are more aware of what these smart chips are and what you can use them to do. So let me know in the comments if you find them useful. And thanks again for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. All right, thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.